Today we are taking a big trip, not just any trip, but a trip to the University of Connecticut or Yukon as everyone calls it. And guess what? We are not just going to look around. We are actually going to go deep dive into what is the life of an international student going to look like. Also, it's not going to be my experience. It's actually an experience of a student who studied at Yukon. Sai did his bachelor's in electrical engineering from India, then decided to rock the whole master's degree at Yukon. We'll talk about how that happened from the very beginning to finally finishing his studies and landing a sweet job as a lead data analyst he was he didn't even have a data analyst experience but this just isn't about books and classes it's about the whole pay package making new friends from all over getting used to a new place and maybe even feeling a little bit lost sometimes but that's all part of the adventure right so if you're thinking about studying to United States or just curious about what is going to be life of an international student, specifically at a Yukon, then stick around because I have so much to share. All right. So after giving exams like GRE, TOEFL, ILTS, which are the entrance exam, you get the results and you start applying for universities. One of the first things that you need to do is selecting a university. So, so I had admits from UTD, San Francisco State University and Yukon. So I asked him, why did he really choose Yukon? What made him choose Yukon? Indians, I wanted diversity and then I wanted wanted to be around people who are from America or like different parts of the world so that I can learn something new and see people from different cultures and then Yukon is like 20 miles from New York City and then like two hours from Boston and then like all the tech hubs and then everything Yukon had a good reputation around the northeast part like in Connecticut or like uh, Massachusetts or New, uh, New York and New Jersey and then it had good name and then the professors I had reached out to them before joining so they were uh, they replied to me and then we had some initial calls so that I could understand what they're expecting. Coming from electrical background I wanted to learn more in data science because it's a transition so I didn't want to limit myself to learning less. One of the surprising things I mentioned to me was that before deciding the university he actually reached out to university professor from which he had gotten the admits. Let's see how it went for him. So I reached out to some of the professors after getting admits in all the universities and then I had some 15 minutes calls with different professors from different departments from different mm -hmm. universities. I asked him how did he craft his cold email to get his response from these professors. I have this course in my bachelor's and then I have done this electives like SQL and machine learning that I have mentioned and then I have done some uh, Ud Udemy courses out of my interest because I wanted to uh, explore more and then get to know in this field and then uh, I have applied to this university, this university, and then I got the admit. So I thought I could, uh, I, I mean, I'll know what I need to prepare before coming to United States or before starting the course. And then your guidance would help me a lot. Mm -hmm. So like some of them reply, like two professors replied from UConn and then like from other universities, like one or two or three professors replied. And then I scheduled a call with them. We are like 10 to 15 minutes calls. And after talking to professor, you will get the clarity of one needs to do before starting their courses. And that's an amazing way to connect with professor because again, building this relationship early on is going to help you getting those RATA positions once you join the universities. And once you receive the acceptance letter from Yukon, you will, you know, find yourself into F1 visa interview. Obviously, that's everyone has to go through that. So what's your perception about the interview? What do you think the visa officers will ask you if you went to the F1 visa interview? I had like interview for like one minute. Like I had like only three questions. Which university and then what were your finances? And then what courses did you take? Like would you want to take in your first semester? Mm -hmm. That's it. And then it was less than a minute. So congratulations. Your visa is approved now. Next thing what you want to do is book your flight tickets. And the next goal would be to find apartments and roommates. But how do you really find roommates? I've heard a lot from international students that finding an apartment is the most difficult task. So, so coming to uh, roommates thing, so I started joining a lot of WhatsApp groups. The links, I found them on Yorker tab. So like if you don't have the app, install it, like, there'll be a lot of groups. You can join them and then ask the students if you have any group for this university, can you send it? Like most of the people will send it and you can join them. Finding roommates was not a problem and then finding room was the problem. How did he manage to find an apartment for the Yukon University? So as I mentioned, I've joined the WhatsApp groups. I had some help from the seniors. Like they were already there in the groups. So they helped some, like they told me what places to look and what uh, websites to look. One of them was apartments.com. Then the other was Suleika.com. Like both these are like pretty famous and they're pretty like 
trustworthy. I mean, like our websites are trustworthy, but then the listings in the websites might not be. Yes, there's a lot of housing scam that happen in United States. Sure, sure. These websites have legit listings, but sometimes scammers add the fake listings as well. So always make sure to reach out to your seniors or university and ask them, is this really legit? Should I make a down payment or security deposit? And most importantly, ask the apartment owner to do a video call to show the apartment so that way they are not just faking it and there is a legit you are actually able to see it and verify it on a video call and one more tip is that always reach out to seniors to make sure that the area that you are choosing is safe area close to university and all of that because they are the one who's there and you don't know the areas so much more before booking the apartment because you are in India. Now, during all these process, you need to take a lot of big decision. Most of the times you may be thinking, am I doing the right thing? Can I do this? Will I be able to pay my big loan? So I asked Sai if he had any of such fears and how did he overcome it? So coming to the money part, like I took a loan. So I had the doubt, like, would I get a job once I graduate? Thought like, would I survive in a, like all different country within like with all new people coming from different parts of the world with different cultures. And then I was very bad at cooking. Like I, and then I don't eat much vegetables or fruits. So all these concerns, like made me think like is it worth it or not and then once i thought about my career like i need to take risk at some point let it be at the younger age like than to risk take risk at in late 30s or early 30s i thought i'll risk it at early 20s i was 20 when i had this plan so i was like let me risk now so i mm -hmm. took the chance and then i told my parents like this is what my plan is this is what i'll be switching my career and this is what my plan is after going to united states once i graduate and this is when i'll come back from united states to india he had all the plan laid out and explained it to his parents so have a clear picture of what you really want to do in the career and be ready to take that leap of faith now let's get back to yukon once everything is confirmed you pack your bags you hop onto that amazing 16 to 18 hours of plane journey land on American soil. So what do you do once you land in American soil or in United States? Yeah, for first two to three days, uh, they were like done in jet lag. So we couldn't wake up. Like we slept for almost 15 to 20 hours a day. So we didn't know what the time was and then get yeah, used just, to it. And then once yeah. we were in the track, uh, mm -hmm. we took SIM cards and then bank accounts and then took pictures with the university. Yeah, these were the things. Oh, bank account and then get a credit card which doesn't require a SSN. And then these are like four to five things that I have done in the first two weeks. The most important thing is going to be cost. I know you're probably wondering how much does Yukon really cost? What was his I-20 amount? I-20 amount was around $50,000. Uh, I think, yeah, $50,000 was the I-20 I amount for that, including expenses per nine months. $50,000 a year. That's a crazy amount. And his master's was of two years. So I asked him, how did, how much did he end up paying and what was the cost of living at Connecticut? I spent around $1,200 to $1,300 per month, including rent and my expenses and groceries and stuff. My wow. rent was around $30 per month. And then I used to share a room with their roommate. And then we were seven people living in a four bedroom apartment. So it was quite expensive. Okay. So considering his three semester, which is roughly 16 months or so, he spent about 70 to $75,000 on his masters, which is a lot of money. And I know you're probably wondering like, this is a lot of money. You know, I probably need an on-campus job. So I asked him, how did he get a teaching assistantship? Because he did got a teaching assistantship is like second semester officially uh, which is fall so i had two part times like one was tutoring like i was a math tutor and everything the other was a uh, teaching assistant i mean the teaching assistant i got it in the last semester but then for the third semester uh, i had math tutor which was like i had only for 10 hours a week so it wasn't stressful and how do you get this position in the first semester i had one course which is sql so the professor like i started we became so close and then i started answering like uh, excelling in the assignments and everything and at the end of the semester i put an like i sent an email saying that like professor i would love to work with you i have learned a lot from you so then he was like would you be interested in becoming my TA? So I was like, okay, I'm in for that. So mm. I became the TA for SQL final semester. All right. So now I asked him after spending this 50 lakhs rupees on the master's managing on campus job, along with the academics, do students after graduating from UConn really end up getting a job? What is the ROI? Uh, I wouldn't generalize it to UConn. So 
like say you have graduated from harvard and then if you can't do the work you'll not get a job obviously for sure like there's no doubt in that say you have graduated from normal university and then if you can do the work you'll get the job for sure like be 200k or 300k companies are ready to pay for you so it doesn't depend on the college that you have graduated from it depends on what you know and then what you don't know if you can do the work or if you can't do the work and i completely agree with sai i've seen students who graduate from normal university get, getting jobs from google microsoft tesla so it's not really so much about the university brand that matters but how much effort are you willing to put in building the profile and apply the right strategy to get that job yes of course if you are in ivy league university or top 20 universities it will matter but after that everything probably comes down to the same you know finally i asked him like would he recommend people to go to yukon i would recommend people going to yukon only if they like they should be willing to do 37 credit course and then they should be fine with lot of expenses and then getting a part time might be difficult in the first semesters because it's a business school and then the main campus is like 200 miles from the business school so you would not have the campus life i had my i had a good campus life back, back in bachelor so i wasn't concerned about the campus life so if you are fine with all this you can is a good choice so professional like career or uh, opportunities it's very good university the professors are amazing i mean i can't thank enough like they have supported me a lot like come without i have transition from electrical to data science and then the help i received they even referred to me in their companies and then like one of the professors so mm-hmm. like just make sure you have good connections with professors not just this university any university mm-hmm. and then yeah like networking is very important mm-hmm. here's one final advice sai wants to give to students who wants to do their masters in united states uh, so one tip would be don't over study don't over enjoy and then don't over spend like spend mm-hmm. enjoy study so make sure it's balanced you don't have to earn thousands of dollars when you're doing your masters you can earn a lot more when you once you get a full time like it might take 6 months of when you were doing your masters but you can earn it in one month so don't overdo your part time don't over enjoy mm-hmm. do everything but then just make sure you're balancing it mm-hmm. you'll meet a lot of amazing people us will teach a, a lot not it Doesn't teach you only the technical part of it, but then you learn how to live, how to live independently. You'll find different people with different uh, mindsets, and then yeah, you'll find good people, bad people. That's everywhere. But yeah, it will teach you a lot more than getting a job or like networking or enjoyment. What an amazing advice! I love it. Uh, remember to enjoy, spend on experience, but don't overdo it. Uh, stay focused on why you came to United States and keep hustling. Uh, you know, make sure that you are intentional about your time and how you're spending every single time of yours. That's about it for UConn. And if you are interested, I have made similar video for University of Arizona and also for NYU. You might want to watch other universities as well. Go check it out on my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep smiling and keep hustling. You gotta hustle every single day.